we could conquer nature. We are destroying nature at a very rapid pace to the point that we only have 60 years of topsoil left to feed 7 billion, 8 billion, maybe 10 billion people. And that's within some of your lifetimes that this will be exhausted at the current rates. In essence, we are now suffering because of too much carbon out of Mother Earth and into Father Sky to create huge disruptions. Many Americans didn't know about the typhoon, the second major one in Japan this, this season. A million people evacuated. We knew about this in this state, of course, and they're calling it the new normal. You know what? That's going to be a very short-lived normal. And this is why. If you look in, in California, we have been bragging about how many carbon reduction we're we are actually doing, we're succeeding with our legislation and our policies. But look at when we have these fires, and this is not 2018 fires, where three of the largest California fires of the 12 largest ever were happening just this year. What lays ahead of us is more heat, more increasing heat, where there are many regions in the world when it hits 120 plus, humans can no longer survive. And it's been happening in many regions, not just Pakistan or the Arabian Peninsula, but other regions as well. We change very slowly as a people, and we have such a short time frame to do it. I am encouraged, I am challenged, and sometimes I'm hopeless. But every day, I get up to work on this one issue, because Earth needs it, the atmosphere needs the cleansing, the ocean needs a chance to recover. And if humanity is to exist, Without taking it out of the atmosphere, there really isn't a future. With doing it, it is a bright future. Thank you very much. Simply stated, tillage is bad for the soil. So what is happening when you've got tillage? You've got large aggregates of soil there and they're getting chopped up. You're destroying the life in the soil and you're also, when that's biological, but on a chemical basis, you're also taking that carbon in the soil, which is the life, and the decomposing life and all of the parts of that, and it is joining with the oxygen and becoming carbon dioxide. And that happens because you have those aggregates like this, and as you decrease them, you're increasing the surface area compared to the volume. So it's like a turbocharger on an engine, and you get all of that carbon being blown off, and all of the nitrogen also. So that's actually physically how we get the release of um, greenhouse gases from tillage. And then we're killing all that life. And that is just like an ecosystem destruction. Imagine that aggregate is your town and you have a tiller come through, blasting it apart, blowing a hole in your ozone layer. You're gonna die as the microbiology in there. On our farm, when we first started, we were doing till organic tillage because that's what was done and we were learning. Um, and we had a soil organic matter of about 2.4%. That's what it looked like wasn't very beautiful. Through the practices of stopping tillage, of using compost, and of being super intensive and really focusing on the ecology, we were able in six years to bring that up to 8 to 11 percent. And it stayed there. Keep living plants in the soil as often as possible. Why? This is the answer to it. We want to photosynthesize. We want to feed those microbiolo the microbiology in there and keep them happy. Get them in there, keep them happy, keep them fed. This comes from Christy Jones who's an amazing um, soil scientist also. So photosynthesizing, taking you back to middle school biology, what's happening there? The plant is taking CO2, it's taking off the sea, it's creating glucose. Then it's resynthesizing that into a myriad of other carbon-based products, depending on the plant, depending on the season and everything, 30 to 70% of that is pushed out through its roots as an exudate. That is the carbon going from the air into the soil. Check this out. So you got the industrial food chain versus small shareholders, um, who they call the peasants uh, farmers. This means that they're farming on less than two acres, I believe it is. Well, guess what? Farmers on farming less than two acres produce 70% of the world's food. So over here is the other 30% from the industrial. Guess what? They use 20% of the natural resources that all of ag uses to produce that 70% of the world's food. Really? Versus the industrial food chain uses 80% to produce only 30% of the food. But here in the United States, 
what we see are, oh, you need to figure it, and, you know, you know, get rid of life and just put in when you want. If you can do it on two acres, can you do it on 2,000 acres? No, that is not the answer, and that's not how to feed people. 15 calories obtained for every one calorie expended versus a mere 1.5. Oh, and get this, 43% of these farmers are women. Versus only 22% over here. And also, you want to talk varieties, two, over 2 billion here and just 80,000 here. So, according to this report, I'm a peasant farmer. I know I'm a very privileged white lady here in the Bay Area, but I know if we could do it here in the Bay Area, and if I can grow food on two acres to feed my community, you know what? It can be done anywhere, and I think it's one of the biggest solutions that we have. Okay. We all have to be climate activists right now. We've got to drive fossil fuel use down to zero uh, as soon as possible. Uh, if we don't do that, everything we're talking about here today is really irrelevant, okay? But at the same time, we not only have to go down to zero fossil fuel emissions as quickly as possible, but we have to draw down from the atmosphere a couple of hundred billion tons of carbon that have been put up there uh, over, over uh, the last few centuries, especially through burning fossil fuels and through destructive farming and land use, is seek out the positive. Stop talking gloom and doom. Talk about how we can do it. We can regenerate the earth. And we can regenerate the global grassroots. I mean, I work half the time in Mexico, and it's a very difficult place with drug cartels and multinational corporations running the country in the ground. But what happened on July 1st was that the Mexican people, especially the young people and the rural people and the poor people stood up and they elected a Bernie Sanders type of government, Lopez Obrador as the new president. When you're talking to people, start out from where they're at. If their main issue is, is forced migration, for example, you can connect the dots to these issues. One of our main campaigns in Mexico and Central America is from forced migration to regeneration. How many people have you had talk about the solution to the global immigration crisis really lies back in creating regenerative food and farming networks in their home communities? We can have a new world. Let's start it today. Thank you very much.